Hello and welcome once again my friends to this Red Gaming Tech video myself and Marta. As always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world from the last 24 or so hours as of the 24th of July. Now before I get into that, for those of you who haven't seen our Xbox Games Showcase live reaction video, it will be linked in the description below, go check it out. Uh, it's worth a watch in my opinion. Anyway, we're going to start things off with Intel and a mysterious new i9 processor. So these listings were helpfully spotted by Momomo over on Twitter and then reported by the guys over at videocards.com so thank you very much to them both. You will of course find both links in the description below this video. So according to what Momomo has found we have several new listings for a mysterious 10th generation KA series. Now we don't know if this is some sort of mistake but it does seem fairly likely that it isn't because multiple stores have now listed the processors but obviously until it comes out of the mouth of Intel take it with the usual pinch of salt TM. So we just we just don't know what these are it's a bit weird we don't know what the KA stands for because it's got the K on there we can obviously surmise that the processor is unlocked it still has overclocking it could very well just be a slightly lower clocked variant of the K series. They are ever so slightly cheaper than the vanilla K series. For example, according to Video Cards' calculations, the 10900KA costs 2.1% less than the 10900K. The 10850 is the same price as the 10850K. Oh, sorry, the KA is the same price as the K, you know what I meant. The 10700KA costs 1.2% less than the 10700K, and the 10600KA costs 2.8% less uh, than the vanilla 10600K. So we're going to have to wait and see uh, what Intel says on this one, because Intel has never used the KA suffix before. So it could literally mean anything. It could mean that you get a free pie with the processor, for all I know. I mean, that probably isn't what it means, but, you know, it's an option. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, it's uh, very mysterious. But we're going to move on from that whole mystery to more solid ground with Rocket Link S. And this is just a bit of a small update about the motherboard support for the processor. There was an interesting listing discovered by Momomo once again on Twitter. And it basically confirms that MSI's H410 motherboard will support Rocket Link S. Now we already knew that 400 series motherboards would support Rocket Link S in some form. But we only knew for sure that it was going to be the Z490 series. So essentially this confirms that, well, entry level motherboards, at least for MSI, are actually going to support the upcoming processor. Now obviously with this, all the relevant leaks, uh, links, links, there we go, that's a word that I want, will be in the description below, including the PDF to the uh, MSI listing itself, so you can see that it will support uh, Rocket Lake S outside of the screenshot I have obviously provided. So, that's not the only Rocket Lake thing I have for you today. I did say this was a lot of Intel news to start off with, so we got this topic and another Intel topic up next, so buckle in boys. Anyway, we have some interesting updates regarding the clock speed of Rocket Lake S next. So this time around we have someone different to thank for this particular leak. It is Leakbench over on Twitter. Of course you can find it below. And they have discovered a benchmark for the upcoming Rocket Lake S processor. And it is a Geekbench listing this time around. And you can clearly see that it was recogni recognized excuse me, as a Rocket Lake S part. Now the only downside is we don't know which Rocket Lake chip this is. It's probably the flagship part, just judging from the specs that we can see here, but that is an educated guesstimate. We don't actually know for sure that it is, but it has a likelihood of being the flagship processor. In terms of the scores, it was 1507 in the single core score and 7603 in the multi-core score. But what's really interesting here is that you can quite clearly see that, well, Rocket Lake S, excuse me, is actually capable of boosting to 5 GHz after all. Now, obviously, there's also something else to keep in mind with this. This is an engineering sample. We don't know how early of a sample it is, of course, but with an engineering sample, you can usually expect some difference between the clock speed and the specs and everything that you see in early leaks, benchmarks and so on compared to the actual finally released chip. 
But it is still promising that this benchmark exists and does show that Rocket Link S is actually capable of boosting to 5 gigahertz, at least in this instance. I would want to see more benchmarks uh, showing this before we celebrate too much, but it's definitely encouraging and I'm definitely pleased to see this because, as I've said many, many times until you're probably sick of me hearing it, it's better for us as consumers if both Intel and AMD are remaining competitive against each other. One company getting complacent and not bothering to try is not really good because it just means that we're not really seeing any real innovation because the person in the lead has no real reason to take risks to spend money to R&D because, well, they're already in the lead. Their opponent isn't challenging them, why would they bother? Now, I'm not saying that's the, that's the position that AMD are in, but AMD have definitely been on fire lately, really challenging Intel and the results in the sales and the feedback on Ryzen have really spoken for themselves. But we're done with that. We're going to move on to our final Intel topic for today, which is regarding Alder Lake. Now this information thankfully does come from the mouth of Intel themselves. They actually did their earnings presentation today and they revealed their plans to launch the Alder Lake processors in the second half of 2021. However, they did have some disappointing news to go alongside that, in that, well, they have delayed their entire 7nm product, product portfolio, and this has shifted by at least six months, and it has now been delayed until at least 2023. But let me not put words in their mouth, let's hear what they had to say for themselves. They said, quote, Intel is accelerating its transition to 10nm products this year with increasing volumes and strong demand for an expanding lineup. This includes a growing portfolio of 10nm based Intel core processors with Tiger Lake launching soon, and the first 10nm based server CPU, Ice Lake, which remains planned for the end of this year. In the second half of 2021, Intel expects to deliver a new line of client CPUs codenamed Alder Lake, which will include its first 10nm based desktop CPU, and a new 10nm based server CPU codenamed Sapphire Rapids. The company's 7nm based CPU product timing is shifting approximately six months relative to prior expectations. The primary driver is the yield of Intel's 7nm process, which based on recent data is now trending approximately 12 months behind the company's internal targets. So as exciting as Alder Lake is, because obviously it is a big change for Intel to go over to the big dot little design, but it's obviously not great that 7nm has been delayed and is 12 months behind uh, their schedule, because they've kind of been behind in terms of pure NM for a while, like, it became a bit of a meme for a while, how many times 10nm get pushed back and pushed back and pushed back, and there was even rumours for a bit that it was being cancelled, obviously Intel denied that, and obviously t it did eventually come out, but on the heels of that, having such a significant 7nm process delay is obviously not a good look for the company, but they obviously wouldn't be doing it unless they absolutely had to. And just to put this in some sort of perspective, according to their current roadmap, and of course this can change as time goes on, the AMD are going to be on Zen 4, that being 5nm, by the sort of 2021-2022 range. So obviously there's more to what makes a good processor than raw nanometers, obviously, but it's not exactly good that AMD are going to be so far ahead of Intel in that respect. And obviously, further delays could happen. Obviously, that something could happen to make it faster than they expected and really sooner than they thought, but we obviously just don't know. It's obviously a lot of speculation based on what Intel have said. So yeah, bit of a bit of a bummer there for Intel, but we're going to move on now to some NVIDIA news, as we have a benchmark for their A100 Ampere. So what we have this time, thanks to Jules Erbach, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, the CEO of Otoy, which is a company which specializes in holographic rendering in the cloud, very graciously shared the very first benchmark results of NVIDIA's A100 Accelerator. Now obviously this is the only Ampere-based graphics card for the moment, and as I said, it is a compute accelerator, but we don't, this is, as I said, the, the very first benchmark. We have not seen any meaningful results as of yet. Now, this was captured on Octane Bench, which is NVIDIA exclusive because it relies on CUDA. So we cannot compare this against Arcturus or Big Navi or anything. We can only 
compare it against old NVIDIA results. So according to Jules, he said, quote, a record-breaking results. The NVIDIA A100 has now become the fastest GPU ever recorded on Octane Bench 446 OB4. Ampere appears to be 43% excuse me, faster than Turing in Octane Render, even with RTX off. Now just to refresh your memory of the specs of the A100, it has 6912 CUD cores and 40 gigs of HBM2 memory and also features PCIe 4.0. Now Otoy have helpfully provided a little bit of a graph to show some previous results um, on this very same benchmark and you can see you know, Titan V, 401 points, Tesla V100, 371, I'm not going to go all the way down because I'll be here literally till Christmas 2021 uh, reading them out but you can see for yourself the increase as it goes up the stack but there's not a huge difference as you will notice between Titan V and the Tesla V100 which of course are Volta based cards so make of that what you will guys make of that what you will we're going to finish up, however, with a couple of pieces from Microsoft following on from their event yesterday uh, regarding Halo Infinite. So after the Xbox Games Showcase yesterday, there was a lot of talk about Halo Infinite, and a lot of people are disappointed with the graphical quality that we saw. But it wasn't even just to do with the quality, there was pop-in issues, and I think people were just expecting more, graphically speaking, given how... And I think people were just expecting more given how much Microsoft have been pushing the Xbox Series X as the most powerful console. And Xbox's Aaron Greenberg spoke to Inside Gaming's Alana Pierce and he addressed the criticisms that have surfaced uh, regarding the Halo Infinite gameplay that was shown. And he said, quote, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. It's July, we're far from holiday. You're seeing a work in progress game. That said, you've probably watched the stream in 1080p maybe, so we put up a 4K 60fps on-demand stream. Go look at the game in 4K 60fps. It's very hard to show the full power and graphic fidelity of what Xbox Series X will be able to deliver for you over a stream, so go back and look at it in 4K 60fps. Obviously, it's going to look nicer in 4K 60fps, but that doesn't really address the pop-in issues uh, that were present during the stream. Now, I did like some of the textures in the stream, like the water textures I thought were actually pretty nice, but then again I like a good water texture, but obviously that's just speculation, I don't actually know that. There's another thing regarding Halo Infinite though, um, there were some comments from a 343 developer uh, during a Q&A session, and they revealed something rather interesting, saying, quote, the game was captured from a PC that is representative of the experience that players will have on an Xbox Series X. Now obviously it's not uncommon for games that are still in progress to be shown on PC when they are coming out on PC and it's obviously fairly common to Microsoft to do, that, to do this, excuse me. Uh, they did this last time with the Inside Xbox conference, a few of the games were showing on an equivalent PC rather than an Xbox Series X itself. But still, it was running on a PC and not on the console. With all that said, however, that is me done for this video. You can, however, expect another video going up today, whether or not it be before or after this one is tough to say. Upload times, export times are weird. But regardless, there will be another video from us today. So thank you so much for all your support. It really does mean a huge deal. And I will see you guys next time. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.